You guys, I am so excited to share this one with you. This is how you can keep lemons fresh for an entire year. So what you see here, this is a jar of lemons that I preserved last year. In fact, it was done last March of 2022, and this is February 2023. So I want you to look at these, how great they look. So they're just in here. I'm gonna show you how we do this, but I want you to see, see how bright. So these are fresh lemons that we just got. These have been in here for almost an entire year. And I just pulled this one out and cut it in half to show you, look at that. It is plump, lots of moisture, lots of juice, looks fabulous. And I squeezed them into a cup for a taste test. And I have to say drinking straight lemon juice was a little bit of a pucker punch, but it tastes so good. Now there's two different ways that people will use this method on. And this is basically, we are fermenting our lemons and it keeps them for the whole year. This jar, I left them whole as a test to see what they would do without cutting them and salting them inside, which is traditionally how you see a lot, that, which is what this jar was. These are the ones that you cut them in quarters, you leave them intact at the bottom, cut them in quarters, and you sprinkle salt on the inside, and then you pack them into your jar. And then because they are cut with the salt and you pack them in tight, you'll get the lemon juice that will cover them. And if you don't have enough, then you'll just add a little bit extra and top it off with a 3% salt water brine. And then you let them ferment at room temperature for a couple of days, and then you transfer them to cold storage. So this definitely will keep, this was the same batch of lemons. I did them both in March, so they will keep for a year. However, when you do it like this, the juice inside, because the lemon has been exposed, it's really, really salty. So it works great for any type of savory dishes. So if you're doing like a lemon garlic chicken or lemon rosemary, roasted garlic potatoes, you know, that type of a thing. Or if you're putting this in uh, like a fresh salsa instead of lime juice, if you're putting it over salad, like anything savory, this works great for but it doesn't work great for baking. And I happen to have a bit of a sweet tooth and I love lemon bars and citrus cookies. In fact, in our Harvest to Table magazine, if you haven't checked that out yet, for the month of February, we have some lime bars and then some citrus cookies that are amazing, but I couldn't use the lemons from the fermented when they're done this way because it's just too salty for baked goods. However, this, I wanted to see if over time, so I left this jar for an entire year to see if how much of the salt water it would absorb and how much that was transferred over to the juice over time. And just a little tiny bit of salt. So when I go to make the cookies, I just won't add as much salt in. I'll test, taste test that. I might not have to add any salt. However, it's not so salty like this one that you're like, oh, there's really no way that I can use that in a baked good because it's just gonna be too salty. It's just a hint. So I have to say, both of these methods work great, but this one, is the one that I'm going to be doing with this year's lemons. Now for the, this is the more traditional fermented lemons where they have been sliced open in quarters like that and salted, and that works great. And you may recognize that recipe, it's on page 333 of my book, Everything Worth Preserving. But because this allows me greater versatility and it kept just as well for the entire year, that's how we're going to do this new batch. So I'm gonna use the same salt brine ratio that is in the traditional fermented lemon recipe on page 333 of Everything Worth Preserving, which is a 3% salt water brine. Now I use Redmond's Real Salt. This is the salt that I use for everything. This is my cooking salt, my baking salt, my canning salt, my fermenting salt. It's just a great all around salt, mined and made here in the US, and it doesn't have any added anti-caking agents or, which is really key, iodine. When you're working with canning and ferments, we don't wanna have any iodine in there. So for every two cups of water, we are going to be doing one tablespoon. So I am going to need four cups. So that's gonna be two tablespoons of water to four cups 
or excuse me, did I say that backwards? Two tablespoons of salt to four cups water. Now, because the Redmond's Real Salt still has all of the minerals in there, you can see there's like little red flakes and pink. The dark red doesn't always dissolve fully and that's completely fine. We're just gonna stir this and I used warm water just to help dissolve the salt a little bit faster and quicker. But it's completely fine. It, like you can probably even see in this jar from a year ago, at the bottom, you'll see a little bit of those red mineral deposits. That's completely fine. It doesn't harm anything and it doesn't mean that it's unsafe or you've got something funky growing in there. So we've got that all mixed up. So now we're gonna take our lemons. Now I do recommend buying organic lemons, especially when we are gonna be preserving these with the peel on, but regardless, make sure that you have got them washed and rinsed well. I just use hot soapy water and then rinse them really well. And we are going to be getting them into our jar. Now these jars you can get from, I get mine from Azure Standard. But another cool tip is if you're ordering from Azure Standard, I order in the glass jars the coconut oil. And so these actually have coconut oil in them. And then when I'm done with the coconut oil, I pour hot water in there to get any residue out and then dump that and wipe it really good and then wash them with hot soapy water. And then now I've got half gallon glass containers for free instead of having to buy them all. So I'm gonna wanna kinda pack these in there well. And the nice thing about getting these packed in tight like this and the way that this jar has a nice shoulder is you're not gonna have to actually use a weight in order to keep these submerged beneath the liquid line, the shoulder of the jar, and because they're packed in tight, we'll do that for you. Now all we're gonna do is pour our salt water brine over top. And they are completely submerged there. Now, if I wanted to, I could take one and cut it in half and just salt it and throw that in as an extra wedge there. I don't really think I've even got room there. So now we're just gonna go ahead and put our lid on. And you can let this ferment at room temp for a couple of days, and then you're just gonna transfer it to cold storage. So for me, that is a refrigerator. If you happen to have a room that is kind of closed off from heat or doesn't get very warm, ideally at least 50 degrees Fahrenheit or colder, the warmer the room temp, uh, the faster things ferment and they're not going to keep as long. So this jar has been in the fridge for almost an entire year and this one is going to follow it, making sure I put this one in the front so I use these first. But this way you have lemons for an entire year with fresh lemon juice, which is awesome. And if you're getting your lemons in January and February, that is when they are in season. So even though I didn't grow these because we're so far north, it means that I'm getting them at the lowest price and preserving them and therefore I am still saving money.